also learn the whole Hi guys, it is language. Pop with Palace time again, and we are back, hopefully kids in landscape I mean, mode now. There's Tony back there, and a name shit. and a face yeah. that some of you might recognize, Patricia Sexton from The Happiness Idea. I'm going to sit down and get my scripts out because we are just about to start. You should write that. Um, no. it's, it's funny because I've talked to someone else who really was uh, into uh, uh, writing a children's book and on another sea creature. And then I'm supposed to be meeting with someone who has already written a book and I think she might be interested in the happiness idea. So there's a whole lot of synchronicity happening right now. Oh, yeah. synchronicity stew today. <laughs> so if it goes anywhere, Tony, we could get an illustrator. Oh, it's just a thing in my head that I've been thinking about in the last couple of months, so nothing serious. But... Oh, no. I couldn't actually something. write it. I'd have to say to someone, this is a story, and then... You could write it. I can only work The words are people. in your head. Quit taking them out of your head and put them on the page. Or I could, I gotta think I could of, midwife your words for you. But then it's like creative. Like, what is he doing on the way? What makes the story exciting for that one episode? It's, all you have to, I mean, that, it's the same way you create music. Yeah. It's just, you'll think of it after a time working on it. Do you know what someone said to me today? What's that? Never say to yourself one day. Say Ooh. to yourself day one. Day one. That's a good one. Today is day one. So we've got a seven second sting. Okay. And then our intro. I'm wondering if I, I'm trying a new light today. Oops, I can't even see. It's quite good to back in the back of the mouth. Let's unlock my jaw. Oh, you didn't answer what song you wanted. Yes. Oh. Arnell. Let's go, Arnell. Okay, cool. Three, two, one. Hey, you. Yes, I mean you. Are you ready to make your life pop? Well, then, welcome to Pop with Passion. Find out how to follow your passion, discover your purpose, and express it with personality. Learn from people who have figured out how to do this and are willing to share because they want your life to pop, too. Welcome, everybody. I am Palace, and I am joined again this week by co-host Tony Cap. Hey, Tony. Hey, how's it going? Good. We missed you last time, although we did enjoy the wonderful Mick. Yes, we he's brilliant, him. isn't he? He is brilliant. There's a lot of talent at Wellington Access Radio. Of course there is. Yeah. So uh, I know you had uh, a lot on your plate, and we really appreciate you coming back. And actually, we have a bit of the old gang gathered here today. We do. Because also joining us, for those of you familiar with the happiness idea, is Patricia Sexton. She is the founder of this project, and we all were co-hosts of the radio show that you were doing for a while. Mm. Yeah, and we had another co-host, Martin Fossen, who's not here today. I kind of feel like I should have just issued him the invite. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I know he's in Auckland today, though. Oh, well, so. see, there we go. Mm. That was one of the challenges. But I thought we would start today with just a quick background on what the happiness idea is and where it now stands, and then we'll get down to what I really wanted to talk to you about today, which is that, that caramel layer in the pop process, mm. bomb bomb model, of passions and values and how you're following it. But so first, let's start with an update on the happiness idea. The happiness idea, for those of you who are new um, to me talking about it, um, is a social enterprise whose aim is to spread happiness around the world using crowdsourcing technology. Now, most of you right now are probably like, what? <laughs> so let me break that down a little more simply. If you ever logged on to Kickstarter or to Pledge Me, those are all crowdfunders. People are pursuing their dreams and their passions, and they're asking you for money to be able to do it. But what we're doing at The Happiness Idea is giving you the tools that you need. So instead of crowdfunding, we're crowdsourcing for things. So we're the crowdfunding, we're Kickstarter for stuff instead of money. And connections. And people. Connecting people. people yeah, people, people, resources, who, connections, to make things tools. happen. We've, crowd, so, you know, we've gotten a goat for a guy in Albania who needed a goat to help feed his family. We've, gotten, we've tried to crowdsource a bicycle for a, a kid in Vanuatu who needed to get to school. Things like that. So... People need things in order to pursue their dreams. We provide the things. Yeah, and we were actually just talking about children's books, and we our first successful crowdsource project was a mm. coloring book for the Wellington Botanic Garden for yes. children to go. They had other coloring books on sale, but none with Wellington Botanic Garden themes. So yeah. we, we've got which that is up brilliant, by the way. Oh, did you did you bring it home to your kids? Yeah, yeah, they. Yeah. Um, I was just looking at it. I think yesterday. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, it's. They've still exciting. got to learn to draw on the lines, though, but. No, they don't. It's a great book. No, they <laughs> don't. We're all about living outside the box here. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I think it's fascinating what you do. Of course, we met and you said, come and host the show. And I loved the idea. And it was just like, oh, effervescent personality, mm. really cool social enterprise idea. How could I say no? But um, what's so interesting is you've been pursuing this. However, it was a 180 from life before. Yeah. And that was... As a, as a Wall Street high powered, what were you on Wall Street? Uh, for an exchange wrong. salesperson, I um, sold currency derivatives and structures to hedge funds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, quite different from what you're doing yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So, what spurred the the change in direction? Well, when I lived, uh, when I worked in um, in banking, <clears throat> I got a chance to live in various places overseas, and I would have a chance. When I lived in Tokyo, for instance, I got a chance to go to Tibet. When I lived in Singapore, I got to go to Nepal and all sorts of places. And as I went to these places, I kept meeting people who talked about what it was that made them happy. And no one ever said money. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I thought, I want to tell these stories, and somehow I want to help people achieve their dreams. But that's not a thing. That's not a thing. That's not a role. That's not a job. That's just a thought that you have in your mind that means absolutely nothing unless you take the first step. At the time, I didn't think I was taking the first step toward a social enterprise that I would create in Wellington, New Zealand, 15 years later. But what I did was, I quit my job, I moved to, um, a little bit abruptly, um, <laughs> I moved to Mongolia. And, yeah, say that um, again. You moved to Mongolia. <laughs> and why was that? Well, I got an internship at a TV station there. So I thought, what better way to see the world and to learn the, 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 you know, the trade, the TV trade, than to go to Mongolia and do it. I guess I could have done it in, I don't know, California. But anyway, um, I went to Mongolia. I ended up, um, they had a spot. They gave me um, a role to report and then to be the news anchor. And all these funny things started happening, which is, I, you know, I firmly believe that when you start pursuing your passion, it pursues you in kind. It's impossible to not succeed. You won't succeed every single time and, all, you know, every step of the way. But it does give you clues that you're on the right path. Mm. Your dream and does say, yes, you're here. Um, keep going. Keep going. Mm. Yeah. And we're going to get into that because mm. it can be confronting. It's not as easy as it sounds. And, you know, I, I talked with Nick about this, Tony. I so put him on the spot. I said, here we are talking about passion, purpose, and personality. The show is called Pop. And I've got this American voice that people are just probably going, enough. You know, <laughs> now I'm inviting another American voice on. And it's, you know, it's funny because, yes, there is that belief that you can do something like that. But I think Kiwis share it, too. Don't you think this, this feeling that anything is possible? Of course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that ingenuity that is that runs through the, the sort of Kiwi ethos, so to speak. I sometimes wonder if Kiwis are a little bit... Um sit back a little bit you know? mm, interesting or yeah well that's what i, guess I, I don't want to say too much well there'll be people out there that disagree with me but um you know they're not listening <laughs> <laughs> okay then, uh... but that's literally where i sort of i poke pins in people that's what i do with pop is i sort of poke pins Ouch. in people and wake them up and say you know there's a dream in there you know there's something mm. in there so and you you know you had the clues your ears pricked up when you were you were pursuing this Wall Street career, but overseas, and you're starting to see. Hmm, it was like a ship. Way. It was like a ship coming in, in the man. It was still in the mist, and I couldn't yeah. quite figure out what is this. Is this a journalism career? So I pursued that initially. You know, I went down a very traditional path. I went into broadcast journalism. I applied to journalism school, and I just did it very traditionally. And I because thinking, you you wanted to tell the stories of these people, or what was it you wanted to do with journalism? Some sort of social contribution. No, I think what it was is um, I was surrounded by people who were telling me how to do things. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's really hard to let go of the way society operates in your mind. It's so hard to let go of that mindset. This is The word should mm -hmm. is a very popular word. Mm -hmm. And so I kept hearing, you should go to school. You should get a job. You should get an internship. You should learn. And so I thought, of course I should. And yeah. so I did. Mm -hmm. So I started out very traditionally. I got it. You know, I had a job at CBS News in New York, and then I moved to um, a Chinese TV station where I hosted a show about people pursuing their dreams. And then everything changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's so interesting because that should, it comes from up here, and I'm constantly, and I'm pointing at my head for those of you who are listening on the radio, but so often we need to be able to listen to what's in our head, but also tune into what's in our heart and our gut. I say this over and over again. And, and that's where the challenge comes in. Part of the challenge is how you put it so beautifully, that 
that ship in the mist. You don't know what's around the corner. So it, it it's it's difficult to know what signs to pay attention to, what voice to listen to inside of you, and to have faith that you're going to actually make it out of the mist and a new horizon and new vista yeah. will open up. Maybe it's not even a ship, you know? Maybe mm. it's something else. Mm. So what kept you going in that sort of head in the mist point of your life? Um, I think my, my fundamental belief that we all inside, no matter how buried it is, we all have a dream and it, we all can pursue it. And so I was quite in tune with the fact that my dream was there. I just wasn't exactly sure how to achieve this thing where I want to help people achieve their dreams in really random spots in the world, such as a small village in Albania or, you know, um, a Himalayan kingdom. Uh, mm. And those, you know, all, all the stories I mentioned were all true. How do I, how do I do that? Well, that's not a thing. How do I define it? How do I talk to people about it? How do I create a tagline? Mm -hmm. These are all things that you actually have to do, mm. but the ship has to come in from out of the mist. You can't, you have to keep taking your clues as they come. Baby steps. That's what I'm yeah. constantly talking about. It's one little baby step after another. Mm. And that means having faith that you, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, mm. but they don't talk about the, what is it, 999 steps that's going to next yeah, that's before right. you reach that thousandth yeah. step. And, and so that's really critically important. Um, and so, yeah, so you, you decided that that's the direction that was going to take you. So you ended up in Mongolia, but here we are, the two of us, expats, sitting in New Zealand. Yeah. So how did New Zealand come into the picture? So um, about a year after I quit my banking job and before I embarked on the journalism career, I was uh, invited to Hong Kong by a friend, and it was one of those things where I just couldn't say no. I had some time off work. I had the money to do it at the time. And I went to Hong Kong, and I met this guy at the Sevens, and we just locked eyes, and we fell in love. And um, we did long distance for a while, and then he moved to New York. He's Kiwi. moved to New York from London. Um, and the first thing he said to me when he got to New York was, I have a dream. And I was like, yes, this is it. <laughs> Let's hear it. He said, I want to move to New Zealand. My home. I want to go back to Wellington. It's my dream, and I was like, "Ooh, that's tricky." Because I love New York, and so um, you know, eventually we did. About five years later, we did move with our first child um, because I think everyone should follow their dreams. And I was happy to support my husband. It doesn't make it easy, you know. It doesn't make it easy to mm. to pursue someone else's dream with them. Mm. Kiwi, Kiwi men tempting Americans to cross. Now, my husband's American, I have to say, but Tony, I, there are quite a few people who have people I know who are expats who've married Kiwi men and then they want to come back here and raise their children. Kiwi men are some of the most handsome men in the world. <laughs> and good dads. Can I just... Tony's totally sweating. I know, I know. <laughs> Dear me. But really good dads, too. Good dads, good looking. I have never seen so humor. many fathers. He's like blushing now. Fathers waiting at the <laughs> end of the school. Come from Middle East. The, end of the school day. Waiting yeah, to they're good. Their fun. kids, it's yeah. amazing. And Saturday mornings, apparently there's a tradition of taking the kids out and letting the... The moms or moms. Oh, no, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you've been out gigging the night before till two. Well, sure in Bay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, too funny. Um, but New Zealand, and this is really a, an important piece of this puzzle because I came, my husband got a job down here, but I just knew intuitively, yep, absolutely. I had never seen the country. He couldn't even finish saying the words New Zealand, and I said, yes, we're going. And what I found here was the sort of headspace and that sort of culture that says, yes, you can do this, you can give it a go, right? And you can tap into your passion and find your purpose and follow this personal quest. And so I felt that that was in sort of busy or more competitive places like New York, where I have a friend that I talked to who was from Mexico City. She said, there are 28 million people in Mexico City. You don't have time for headspace and to find, you know, tap into this and that. You gotta go, hit mm -hmm. the ground running. Mm -hmm. So did you find that sort of ecosystem here that allow these green shoots to turn into more mature ideas? No. Okay. <laughs> in some ways I did. I've met some of the most extraordinary people here, you know, in media or in social enterprises, neighbors, but I, I kept failing to find a job and it took a real toll um, on my relationship because it's actually, it's incredibly difficult to watch someone else's career you know, skyrocket mm -hmm. your partner, the person you supported, while you're sitting back at home thinking, okay, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll write another book, 
I don't have a book deal. Oh, by the way, she did write a book called Live from Mongolia. Oh, yes, yes. yes. that's on Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to know about that experience mm. there, it is it is a very entertaining read and eye opening. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And when can you get that book? Oh, on Amazon, yeah. Mm. It's that be, easy. You can find it at um, those bookstores that you said. Oh, cool. I didn't yeah. know you had mm. um, But I might point out that you were not trying to get a job in a hedge fund, right? No, I was and trying it, to get a job back in, in media. So I'd embarked okay. on this career. You know, I'd had this TV show back in New York, and I thought I could translate those skills here. And it turns out that wasn't, um, there wasn't really a market for that. I mean, the media world, the world over, media is fractious, it's changing, it's downsizing. And I was coming into it with, um, you know, Something that, you know, it's a skill set that a lot of people here already have. Which is why I didn't even try. <laughs> when I moved yeah. here, I just said, no. I should have met you earlier. <laughs> because they have some incredibly talented people in media, and yeah, it's pretty saturated. So I just went in a different direction as soon as I got here. But that's about me, and we want to talk more about you. However, let's take a quick break. Mm. You were debating about which song to play, and I didn't even catch what you decided in the end. Don't stop believing, and I think the version is with Arnel Pineda, who's got the most incredible success story, the story that never should have been told because it never should have happened. Oh, tell us after. Mm. Mm, sounds interesting. Here we go. Today, Although I think I know the story. I think we did it on the happiness idea once. Here, I'll just. You're gonna see me how's cry. That? I love this. Song. How's, can you even see Patricia? We gotta back that up a little bit, guys. I love the song. I love this version. Yeah, oh, yeah. Listen to his the energy. Yeah, he's got great jeans in this particular. <laughs> you mean blue jeans? jeans. Yeah, blue jeans. Yeah. <laughs> You're going in a different direction. Or... Oh, jeans. Um, <laughs> um, the DNA is fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah. So Tony, have you been gigging a lot? Is that why you run down gigging a lot? Um. Yeah, I have. Um, it's only been like. Well, this weekend it was only one gig. No, I've been a bit sick. Yeah. There's been stuff going around, actually, oddly. The virus in the gut. Oh, no. That's not good. So, I, I nearly wasn't going to come to work today, but Nick's away and, like... Well, bless you. You wanted to see us, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. But that's why he's not hugging you. I wanted to see, no share all my chains. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what he did? He, he refused the hug. Oh, you did refuse the hug. <laughs> I'm going to pretend like it's because of the virus, not because you didn't want to hug for me. I mean, um... It'd be your first hug from a person with a mullet, I'm sure. You know when you feel, like I'm not depressed, but when you feel a bit down and you just can't get excited about stuff? When you're not feeling well... I mean, there's exciting is, stuff happening. Yeah. Um, we were going to buy an, another apartment for Sarah and that's kind of fallen through, but it's opened us up to ideas about real estate. Mm. Whether we can do, but you know, like opening up the whole dream box. Yeah, oh, I like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, when you're feeling ill, it Sarah's tends to still be, a bit lost. Oh, it tends to be emotionally draining when you're not. Well, ill. one question I wanted to ask, and I should have just seen, is like Sarah wants, she hates her job. She wants to quit it so then she can do a concierge. Well, we're going to get that into that. Because but the, the thing practical... is, the, the question I have is, you know, you gotta you gotta have money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about, and that is written on my sheet. It's how realistic is it when you've got to earn a paycheck, and that's one of the things we keep coming back to. So, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. I mean, there are certain people that can go, oh, I'm going to do this, and for some reason I've got the cash to do it, mm -hmm. or oh, I'm going to go overseas tomorrow and explore this. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, where the hell did you? Yeah, it's finding that middle way. It's finding that middle way. And, well, well, we'll talk about it. But, like, I was thinking about someone yesterday who went overseas and volunteered for six months. All of the expenses were paid. But then when you've got a young family at home, when her kids are teenagers, so she could do it. When you have a young family at home, you can't do that. Yeah, but, yeah. There, but there are middle ways. And it starts with yeah. just articulating that and putting it out there. This is what I want. This is what I want. Yeah. And telling people. Because people will make connections. People will remember somewhere in their brain, they'll remember that. And so when you make it, that's the first step, is putting it out there. Not just to you, you know, husband, wife talk, 
but to the general world. I'm gonna make you come chanting with me. I'm gonna go. Chanting. Yeah. Oh yes, nice drum solo there at the end. Welcome back to Public Palace on Access Radio 106.1 FM. Don't stop believing. Oh, this <laughs> brings a tear to my eye, that version. And the success, success story? Uh, briefly, Arnel, it's actually quite a long story, but Arnel Pineda grew up in Manila, and as far as I understand, he was living on the streets for a time as a kid, and he was singing in a, some nightclubs in Manila. Uh, um, um, what do you call it? Journey was looking for a new lead singer, he put a call to action out on like YouTube or something. He stumbled on it. He sent them his video, and they called him, like the lead singer, lead whatever, the lead mm-hmm. vibe journey called him, and he said, "Hi, it's whatever his name is. You'll, you would know. I don't know. <laughs> don't know. Yeah. I'm Fella from Journey." <laughs> and um, Arnell, well, I think he hung up on him, and he's like, "Ha ah, yeah, No, yeah. surely it's not you." And he hung up the phone, and they called back, and he says, "No, really, it's us." They flew him to the U.S. He totally bombed in the audition. And immigration wouldn't let him in because they're like, what, you're, you you actually wrote on your immigration form that you're coming in to be a, the lead singer for Journey? Ha, 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 ha. So he totally bombed it, and then he got a second chance, and he nailed it, and now he's a lead singer. Journey. When you say he bombed, you mean he did go to the audition and sung badly? Yeah, it just went. So what do you think, do, do you know what, why they asked him back? No, there's actually, there's a really great documentary um, that's, I think, eponymous with the title of the song, Don't Stop Believing, something like that. And it tells the whole story really beautifully. Um, a friend of mine produced this, called Josh Green. It's, it's amazing. Rough, yeah. yeah, you've got to check it out. It's just like the story but of... But this, is, this ties like, into what we want to talk about. And mm-hmm. that is that, you know, we were talking about sometimes feeling like you're Sisyphus pushing that rock up a hill. Yeah, yes. Endlessly. Yeah. Because it's not easy. So you've made these choices that you come here, you're trying to pursue it. Journalism, door closed. So now you have this other idea to create the social enterprise. Yeah. And... You know, it takes a lot of effort to do that. And what happens is, you put it so beautifully, is you get up the hill and then the darn thing rolls back the down. The rock again. slips out of your hands and rolls all the way back down to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So what is that like? Because you pay a price, at least initially, for trying to pursue your passions and values and yeah, turning he, away he from them. He knows the price. Because I used to be able to say, oh, hi, I, I'm, you know, I'm a Wall Street banker. And people would be, you know, need to give me the respect that's due of someone who's in a certain position. And when you let go of that, because it's not important, you realize that you actually, you had a little a little bit of a, a thing for that ego, a little bit of a thing for that respect. And it's hard to not be given it anymore. But and it's actually, self-respect as well. Mm, it's yeah, not just external, external but internal. Yeah. yeah, when you don't have to go somewhere every morning, you don't absolutely have to, you start to think a little bit less of yourself. Well, I did. Everybody else doesn't, but yeah, I just didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't, I mean, I'm, I'm quite driven, and I, you know, when I have tasks, you know, a big long task, uh, I break it down into tiny little pieces and do all the things you're supposed to do to make the next thing happen, but the next thing wasn't happening. And it was the greatest gift ever. Because if I had landed in the media world here, I never would have pursued what that dream was way back when I was backpacking in Tibet or Nepal or North Korea. I mean, all these, this dream that I'd had all along. I, wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to crystallize it if I'd been sitting in the media world here in New Zealand or in New York. Which is precisely why things don't happen sometimes. I firmly believe right. that. Not yeah. everyone does, but... Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth does, if you watch The Crown. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing. <laughs> anyway, I've got my hand up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Question time. Um, so, here you are pursuing your dream. Now, yeah. does your dream... Uh, earn you money? Can you live off your dream or do you have to do other work to fulfill your dream? Because um, you know there's some people that can live off their dream yeah, with a lot of money or some money or not much, but mm-hmm. then there's other people that do their dream but they can't live off it so they have to do I, don't I guess 9 to 5 or something which would make doing the dream can you, I'm, taking uh, a, it, I'm taking a punt right now and the yeah. punt is if I can spend a couple of years developing this concept and get funding at that point, I can hold off on needing the money until then. Mm-hmm. So I'm dipping in, you know, basically I'm, I'm staking my life savings on the happiness idea. That's a big price tag. That's a big price tag, yeah. 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 However, she is pulling in the Wall Street connections at some point because there's more and more interest in corporate America for, for funding and Impact. supporting impacts mm-hmm. and social enterprises. Yeah. But Tony, on a, on a smaller sort of level, 
where you're not making these big international connections. This is the, really the crux of so much of what I hear. All that's great, but practically, I've got a family, I've got a paycheck that I need to earn, and I've been there. And what happens is, first, you've got to get clear about what you want, and you have to write it down. Without, you know, it's what I call the magic wand moment, and I'm sure I've talked about it before. You write down whatever your dream is without any kind of logic or shoulds or anything. Just, this is what I want. And then you start not only articulating it to yourself, but sharing it with others. Well, this is what I'm doing now, but I'm going to, this is where I'm aiming, this is what I want. You just start telling people that. Because once you start telling people that, that's when connections are made. They'll remember, oh, well, she was interested. I should connect this person to that person. It takes sometimes years. Sometimes it takes decades. But it doesn't mean that it's not worth pursuing. And there are people that I've worked with that I say, have conversations, find out if there's any way, you know, someone who wanted to work in social housing and she was in a very different job. And I said, go start having conversations with people working in social housing and share an hour or two of your expertise or offer to look over one of their plans or whatever. She has kids, she has a full-time job and she's busy, but she did that. And then she eventually made the connections that got her into the position that matched her passions and values. Mm -hmm. It took a year. And sometimes, like I said, for me, I did this when I was in the news and I wasn't seeing my family and I was seeing the news change from real impact and positive contribution with information and inspiration to something more commercially driven. Mm -hmm. I wrote down what I wanted to do and it took me 10 years to achieve it. And that was here. And it's just now starting to actually pay off. And I know that I was fortunate. I had a job. It allowed me to save some money so that I could take this leap to New Zealand and live a little bit off of that while I pulled it together. And not everyone has that luxury. But there are different things, little baby steps that you can take to still bring you closer to that. Mm. Would you add anything to that, Patricia? Um, I, I just think that if you're pursuing something that truly is your dream, um, you can't help but get a helping hand along the way. There's always yeah. a crack somewhere that you can... But do you have any advice for someone that is in a job or, you know, maybe they don't even like their job and they're pursuing a dream, like the reality, uh, have you guys been in that situation before? Yeah. Where you're, it's like, do you have a window where you say, okay, I'm going to stick this out for six months, this job I hate and hopefully something, hate, I don't like using that word, but mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, because then you're working double. Not only do you not like your job, then you've got to come home and then start doing your dream, which can but be But when you quite tap into your passions, and this is the caramel layer, you find energy because you are yeah. passionate about what you do. Yeah. This is the truth. And yes, sometimes you have to say, I've got to stake it out. I had a contract that I had to fulfill, right? And But what I did was I kept my eye on the prize. I am doing this because this is where I'm aiming. And, and I made it clear that this was the function that I had to perform in order to get me to there. So while I'm not a big fan of saying stay where you are, you know, nothing aligns, your passions, values, strengths do not align with what you're doing, you know, keep your eye open for other opportunities. But if you just have no choice, put it in its proper frame. This is what I need to do in order to get me to where I want to go. And it is temporary. Everything is temporary. Pain is temporary. If you allow yourself permission to tap into that, that caramel soft layer, it, you will find both the energy, and if you articulate to the world, you will change your energy, and it will, in some way, shape, or form, start to open doors for you. That's nice, nicely point. said. That's, well, that's my that's belief, great, yeah. and that's my experience. Because I know there's a lot of people out there in that um, position, you know, Ooh, and yeah. it's, sometimes it's, it's hard for them to come home and work on their dreams. and. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Amy Poehler said, the American comedian, she said, you know, she has plenty of money, of course, she's quite a famous comedian, but she's time poor. And she said, I really wanted to write a book, and I have kids, and I didn't have any time, and I was in the middle of a divorce. So I just wrote on post-it notes, I wrote when I woke up in the morning, I wrote on the subway in New York, I wrote, she would just make sure that she did it, whatever it was, just little bits, just chipping away at the, steps. you know, the statue that's inside the block of cement. Wow. Nice. That's a beautiful way to end because I think we're coming up. It's hard to see. I have a new light in the yeah, studio. Yeah, we've got 30 seconds to go. Okay, we uh, go Facebook Live um, every time we do the show on Pop with Palace, the Facebook page. But obviously, we're on 106.1 FM Access Radio. Thank you for joining. Thank you.
I mean 20 seconds. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. That's all right. That's okay. It's better to end in silence. And... Oh. Well, and that was oh, hi, a little everyone. bit more silence right there at that the was end. Me. I didn't even get to show them my mullets. Yeah, so you're growing it out, right? Uh, it's but then you shaved the tricky. side. Yeah, it's yeah. tricky to know what's, what's, what's happening, what's okay. This, I have no control. <laughs> this is just what you see is what you get and always has been. Thank you so much for joining us. It is a really busy month, so actually I'm not going to be doing any other shows because, Tony, you're out of town next week and so is Nick. Yes. Yeah, so this is the last one until March. But it was a really Stay good strong. one. But it's a really good one. So Patricia Sexton, The Happiness Idea. And that's happiness. Give me idea. the bottle too. They can join me. Yeah, Facebook you're... page is Give Me the Bottle. G I M M E. Give Me the Bottle because that's her author page. Yes. And again, it live from anyone. live from Mongolia is the book available on Amazon. So, thank you for joining us. Thank you, resident rock star Tony, and we'll see you in March. <laughs> Take care.